Hey everyone, it's Katie from Moonflower Moments. I wanted to hop on here today and talk about a practice I used to engage in when I found myself slipping into a space of having too many decks that were competing with each other. So what I mean by that is essentially I have two different decks and in a situation in which I would grab a favorite deck or even just like any tried and true deck, period, I find myself reaching for another deck because I've brought something else in that takes its place. And the practice that I'm going to discuss is just like a very simple one that we probably all do on a um, like unconscious level, but it's something that I used to do consciously that I want to bring back in my life. And in the transparency of coming here on YouTube, hopefully in the next year or so, I'll pick this practice back up. So one thing that I like to do when I have two decks that are in competition is I ask myself, why are they in competition first? So the decks that I did this with already would be Squid Cake. Marseille, and then also the Dinosaur Marseille. So obviously both of these decks are a modern take on the Marseille system. So there's an obvious reason why that they are in competition. But what I like to do when I have two decks that are in competition is that I create a journal and I go card by card and I compare the differences between the two decks portrayal of particular cards and even particular suits. I like to break it down on that level. So I know this is something that we probably all do like if we're working with two decks that are similar, but by doing it card by card, I really force myself to examine the differences between the decks and the similarities between the decks. And I'm not doing this from a place of judgment of, oh, I like this one so much more, though that can be a conclusion that you reach. I'm doing it from a place of, I think that these decks have similarities and differences, but each one of them has their own strengths that they're here to teach me. And so I record these findings in a journal that if I am in a situation where I feel like, oh no, I need to rehome the dinosaur Marseille, it's not really working for me, which that situation likely would not ever happen. One, because this is out of print, but you know, through this practice I have bonded with this. But I can pop back open that journal and remember that each deck has its own subtle voice and therefore is worth listening to. So I've already done it with these two decks and when I'm feeling like, oh, you know, one is so much better than the other, da 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 da, it does help me to see it from a non-biased point of view and therefore really appreciate what I have. So to give you an example of how it's done. So I noticed that in the Squid Cake Marseille guidebook, the Four of Cups was uh, well known with like family and belonging. And the way that you can remember it is because each one of these cups represents like the leg of a table where people might gather to have a meal together in a family way. Okay, so the Dinosaur Marseille actually doesn't have any keywords in the guidebook at all. It's not a very like beginner friendly deck, even though it is really cool. Um, so I had to try to imprint my understanding of Marseille onto this. And when I did that, I am able to see the family and the community because these two plesiosauruses are coming together to be able to face this monster. But by analyzing the cards like step by step, I can see that this is a much more neutral read or even a little bit more positive of connotation. So if I'm looking for a reading that is more neutral, but you know, might slide in like the positive direction, and that could re be reader bias because I am an optimist by nature, I'm going to gravitate towards this one. But if I want something that is a Marseille with a little bit of extra flavor, you know, there is a sense of belonging, but it's also like family ties that um, hold you together for survival and for uh, digging down deep inside of you for the grit to continue. I know that like that layer is going to come from me from Dinosaur. So even though on the surface they seem like they fit the same role because they're both Marseille decks, they're different in that way. So I know that disclaimer like the practice that I'm describing is like a tedious one because it is asking you to go like card by card. Obviously if you have a very large collection and you find yourself in a situation where you have a lot of things in competition, you know there's no shame in like rehoming and regifting and giving away. It's just my personal, um, my personal disclaimer is that I try to be mindful about what I bring in and I know that like sometimes I fall on the wayside of bringing in too many things without uh, being mindful of it. So it's just my way to manage that overconsumption or that um, that like oversaturation that I might feel that could lead to deck overwhelm. 
So there's some other decks that I would like to do this with. So I'm putting this here for accountability purposes. And the two that I can think of right off the top of my head are actually like an Oracle deck pair because I love plants. And so this is a place in my collection where I can get super oversaturated. So the one that I've set down already is my Druid Plant Oracle. And then this one is going to be 50 Plants That Heal. So essentially with 50 Plants That Heal, it is not a like metaphysical deck. It's actually like meant to be a study deck. So on the back of the card, it has all of these different plant parts so that you're able to identify it and forge it appropriately for yourself. And then on the front here, you have um, various properties about the plant and how it benefits you and the methods you can use to take this plant in a herbalism capacity. So they do have different functions because like plant, the plant oracle is meant to be read as an oracle, but for whatever reason, I'm finding myself really heavily gravitating towards this deck right now, the 50 plants that heal. And so what I think I need to do, and I'm gonna flip this over so that way we can see what plants are included in both, is I need to take the time to look at each deck and find the plants that are similar between them. So I'm not just interested in doing this for divination, but I also love herbalism very deeply and I love plants very deeply. So it makes sense that I'm going to look through and see what they have in common. Like I know for a fact, juniper is one they have in common. So I'm gonna look in the other one. So what I can do is crack open the guidebook for this one and then just read this here. and. Like, I, it's talking about the same plant, right? But every author and every creator is going to have their own flair to it. That's why we buy so many different oracle decks and so many different tarot decks, because every time we engage with another deck, it adds that layer of meaning. And so I need to be more mindful in terms of accountability purposes for myself of, you know, instead of automatically reaching for this, because the information is here on the guidebook, I can create a plant grimoire since it's something I'm already interested in find the plants that these two decks have in common and ask myself what information is being highlighted in this deck that is not being highlighted in this deck. And then that way I can have a deeper understanding of Juniper overall. And so I think that that's the best way to get this information is to sit there and deliberately compare and contrast what these decks are telling one another. And telling you about one another. So another deck pair that I'm going to share that I think I can do this with is going to be Tabula Mundi. With Thoth. Now, if you know anything about Tabula Mundi, it is a modern take on the Thoth. So this is kind of similar to my Marseille studies. So I won't spend long um, diving into it because we already kind of discussed it. But I bought Tabula Mundi to help me understand Thoth because the Thoth artwork does not appeal to me whatsoever. And so I was like, well, let me get Tabula Mundi and see if it appeals to me better. And so far I have used Tabula Mundi a thousand times more than I've used Thoth. So I think it is time for me this year, maybe perhaps in the winter, to sit down and do the comparison and contrast, especially with the color scales, because I know that those are important with Thoth, and see how the colors are portrayed and what I can learn from that. So the next pair I'm going to talk about is the pair that I really need to get on my game and create a journal for and compare, and that's going to be Terra Botanical, which I know if you have watched anything on my channel, you know that's my favorite deck. I would be 1000% okay if this deck is forever associated with my identity. I love it. I'll never get rid of it. It is my most cherished possession. And then also Herb Crafters, which many of y'all have, and you know that this is an exceptional deck. So both decks, if you're not familiar um, with them, they take plant imagery and um, they are actually just like plant properties and they associate it with the tarot. And so I think it's time for me to sit down and to do a deep dive into these decks in one of two ways. So one thing that I can do is go plant by plant 
So find the plants that they share in common and ask myself, okay, if we went ahead and put the chestnut for the king of pentacles then why in this deck is the chestnut chestnut which it's not in this deck but we're just doing a thought experiment the um nine of cups so find the plants that they have in common in a way of asking myself what is this trying to teach me about the plants or what different properties are being highlighted in these plants that make them better suited for different cards than one another so i can do that Another way that I can do it is by identifying and comparing and contrasting the majors. Now that wouldn't necessarily be very difficult to do because with this deck in particular with Terra Botanical, it's only illustrated in the majors and in the court cards. So all I would have to do is identify the major and go from there or sort the major. So let's go ahead and find one. Okay. So this is a good example. So in Terra Botanical, it looks like justice is the oak tree. Whereas for herb crafters, I'm gonna go see what it is. And as soon as I said I'm gonna go see, I remembered exactly what it was. That is a dramatically different portrayal of this card. We have the oak tree here, and then we also have justice here with cannabis. That is completely, completely different. And I know this guidebook brings in like the socioeconomic um affiliations with that and the political affiliations with cannabis and the justice system whereas this card in particular the guidebook highlights um what oak did for like druidic people so you're seeing this card from two totally different perspectives so instead of me saying oh these decks are in competition with, you, with each other what i really need to do is step up to the plate and create a journal where i compare and contrast both of them to see they're not in competition with each other at all they're they're doing the same thing because they're plant decks right um but one isn't better than the other they're both showing me a different way to look at the card so I'll show you a few more images. I think the Lovers is a great one to compare. I'd be interested in that because, you know, Lovers is, everyone reads the Lovers differently. So I think that I was scared to purchase this deck um, to purchase Herb Crafters because I didn't want it to be in competition with this. But perhaps I've been thinking about it the wrong way that you know they're not in competition with each other but they're meant to be studied together to help me learn and to help me expand my tarot knowledge now like i said once again um i understand that like what i what i'm setting for myself uh with the squid cake and with the dinosaur Mar dinosaur Mar marseille already took me i think i studied both those decks together in a week so this is not a like light-hearted process it does ask for like me as the the person to step up to the table and not everyone has the ability to to do that not everyone has the time to do that but just speaking from a personal reflection level this is something that i found myself doing in the past that really worked and deepened my understanding of the tarot and decks and made me feel like you know everything had a place in my connect collection so i hope that um maybe this gave you the opportunity to think about a pair that you can do this with if there's a pair that immediately comes to mind that you already did this with or a pair that you think would be very well suited because they've traditionally been in competition with each other i would love to hear your responses in the comments below so i wanted to go ahead and say thank you guys and i hope you'll have a wonderful day